Today I'm taking a look at the Metatoyo Dial Caliper. So I always like seeing these. It means that there is actually some quality control. They looked at the thing and they measured it. This is the tolerance that it's allowed to be out. And then this is the tolerance that's actually out. So for outside measurements at two, four and six inches, we had half a thousandth positive. For inside measurements, we had half a thousandth positive at four inches and everything else was dead on. So that is a very accurate caliper. We got our instructions. So this is telling us how to care for it and how to do some basic measurements. So a nice heavy caliper. I gotta say, I really like those large numbers on there. It's gonna be very easy to read this one in comparison to the old one I've been using. So we are locked, we are zeroed. Loosen this guy up. Look at that swing. That is gonna make getting super fine measurements very easy. That is a super high resolution. So you can see on here, every mark is one one thousandth. So that means going from zero to 10 is 10 thousandths. You can also see we got metric as well as inches. So if I wanted to go two, we'll say two and a quarter. That's two, two, five. There we go. So that is exactly two and a quarter. Now it's gonna be real hard to get a finer measurement than that. I can see on here, we are very sharp and pointy. So if you want to use these things for marking out your objects, you can do that. It's not really something I like to do. I try to keep everything in as good a condition as I can. We also have an ability to adjust the zero. So we can loosen this guy up, move the dial around. So if we want to set it off a little bit, so maybe we want to go to zero, we can do that. But I am just going to leave it at zero for right now. You can also see that this is a six inch caliper, so you can get anything from zero to six inches, which is a perfect size for me because almost everything I would deal with is going to be around that range. And the jaw is about one and five eighths deep, so you can measure tubing that's about three inches in diameter. So we got our inner measurement here, we got our outer measurement here, and then we also have our depth gauge right there. I'm just curious to make sure this is repeatable and try to get it at zero. That's pretty darn good to me. So we're pretty close to where we need to be. I'm going to start checking it. So these are the old calipers. This is my buddy's calipers. This is what I've been using. The interesting thing about this one is it actually goes around one time for 200,000. Arguably that could be better because it can make it harder for you to get confused, but this new one is just easier to read. So let's pull that out and see what we get. 22. Now I am aiming for 3540, so I'm going to keep going on this guy. We are just a skim from 3540. See what it looks like on this one. Yeah, we are looking at just under 3540 on here too. I do think that this one is about a half a thousandth over, just like I said on the calibration sheet. So it's just something worth keeping in mind if you're worried about anything that accurate. But, oh no, I'm wrong. <laughs> There's your problem right there. I'm at a thousandth over on this guy. There we go. Now we are in line. I'm just going to make sure we are dead perfect on both of these. That is about as good as I can get it. Let's remeasure. Okay, so we are at about 40 and a half. Oh, yeah. So that is dead. Dead nuts now. So these, yeah. As long as you do what you're supposed to do and calibrate these things properly at the beginning, they are going to read exactly the same. So we're at 40 and a half on this. That's going to make it a fairly tight fit. Let's go ahead and see how that bearing fits. So yeah, that is a nice tight fit. And there's some very nice calipers. Very happy with that.